Uh, well, my name is David Asbridge. I'm a senior economist for Doan Advisory Services out of St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, we have uh, the largest U.S. farmer advisory newsletter in the, uh, in, the in the U.S. We have the uh, uh, also an ancillary business where we advise commercial uh, users of agricultural products as well. And then we also have an agribusiness service where we uh, do strategic and long-term outlooks and all for clients such as big seed companies, fertilizer companies, etc. So that's kind of an overview of the business. Uh, I've been doing this now for about 30 years and so, uh, you know, I've uh, uh, been in the fertilizer industry specifically for 18 of those 30 years and I've worked directly with agricultural commodities for, for basically the whole time that I've been in this industry. So. So, are the prices going up or down for spring, and are we going to be able to move it to the farmer's field? Well, uh, you know, if you're talking about fertilizer prices in general, the answer is yes, they are going to go up and they are going to go down, because if you look at it from a nutrient standpoint, we're probably going to continue to see a little bit more weakness in nitrogen products. You know, that's the situation where we've got a, a huge world supply. Uh, glut right now to be honest with you in the Middle East has added a lot of nitrogen capacity while the US and North America has been cutting nitrogen capacity because of natural gas cost and so what we're seeing is that we've got a lot more capacity coming on in nitrogen uh, at a time right now where we're looking at probably not seeing much of an increase in nitrogen usage you know like we've seen over the last couple of years where we've seen a big jump in uh, corn acreage in the US you know that increases the uh, a big increase in demand for nitrogen uh, usage. We're looking at a situation now, probably for 2009, where we're not going to see an increase in corn acreage as we thought we were going to just a few months ago. Uh, USDA came out with a big report on Monday that said that we've got a lot more corn in stocks than we thought we were going to have. And so that's taken a lot of the pressure off more corn acres. So what we're seeing is, uh, you know, a situation where fertilizer consumption is probably going to be down this fertilizer year. We had a very poor fall season. Uh, the uh, situation in the U.S., the crops were late, farmers weren't able to get out in the field, and even if they had been able to get out in the field, we're not sure that they would have because of all the uncertainty about what's going on, you know, in terms of fertilizer. You know, we, we've seen fertilizer prices go to three times previous record levels, you know, and so, so farmers were pretty confused about what they should be doing there, so a lot of them just made the decision not to do anything in the fall and wait till the spring. And so that, again, put a lot of downward pressure on some of these fertilizer products, particularly nitrogen. If you go to another nutrient, now you're looking at phosphates. We've also seen that, uh, that uh, price pressure push those prices down you know, quite a bit and all. But we're probably at the bottom for phosphates. Potash prices have probably had less pressure on them, again, because of certain other issues, you know, supply constraints and, and so forth. And so, you know, they haven't come down quite as much as the other two have. And also, they, you know, farmers may end up paying more for their potash this spring relative to the other two nutrients than they have historically. You know, for me, uh, it feels like it's almost scandalous. Here in Saskatchewan, we've laid off 2,400 people in the fertilizer industry. You know, just last July, they were telling farmers they buy it and they bought it. Those that had money paid the cash, took the fertilizer. Now all of a sudden they say, well, because of the lack of demand, we've got to lay people off. Well, like I could say, you go back to the crops that we're growing in the U.S., we're, we're not going to be seeing an increase in corn, which we were expecting. We actually planted about 4 million acres less winter wheat this year in, in the U.S. And also the demand for fertilizer C has, 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 has come down some. And so anytime you see demand come down, you've got to see prices adjust to that. So what you're saying then, I mean, a lot of people are saying, well, we've seen all these layoffs here in the potash industry in Saskatchewan, but uh, they're trying to control inventory and, and that's, you know, but if they were to lower price, do you think demand would go up? Well, I, I think that uh, we would see a situation where there could be some more usage, there could be a demand increase with lower prices, and, and again, that, that goes back to economics and all, you know. If a farmer has got a good soil fertility program in place and he's got high levels of nutrients already built up into his soil and he doesn't see the profitability there, he's, he's going to have the, the inclination to cut back on, that, on application rates. And that's what we're expecting to see this year. You know, whereas if all of a sudden he sees that there is a lot of profitability in putting on more fertilizer, then we could see an actual increase in demand, on, again, on a per acre basis, which would expand out across, uh, across all the acres. 
So you know, it, it is going to be a factor of, of what prices do as to what demand is going to be, but the overriding factor is more the total acres. And again, in the U.S., we're looking at you know flat corn acres, we're looking at less wheat acres, and I'm, I'm not really sure what the Canadians are going to do this year as well, but you know, the farmers up here are also looking at their per acre profitability, and that will help them decide should they go into more uh, canola, should they go into wheat, more wheat this year, you know, that, that's going to be their driving factor as well. So how, if, if prices fertilize, I mean, farmers have been complaining about fertilizer prices for some time now. I mean, realistically, what can they expect? I mean, you said it might go up, might go down, but realistically, in terms of price, what, uh, what, what do you think is on the horizon for them? Well, I think that, you know, what, what we'll see probably, and again, you have to look at it by category. Uh, nitrogen prices, we've probably seen them get pretty close to the bottom, you know, so farmers probably should be thinking about if they're in an area that prices have dropped back to a relatively normal level, they might want to go ahead and, and start buying. They're going to run into some places though, some regions where, you know, fertilizer dealers stocked up with high price fertilizer, they're not really following these low prices down, you know. So what they're going to be trying to do is they're going to be trying to buy some cheaper fertilizer and kind of blend those that inventory together and kind of, you know, not lose too much money on the way down. You know, to be honest with you, the fertilizer dealers, a lot of them made money on when fertilizer prices were going up last year. And so this year, you know, unfortunately, some of them are about to give some of that back. What, Is, just one other question, sorry here. What about the, the whole global credit uh, crunch right now? I, I was just wondering how you think that's going to affect uh, fertilizer application and just farmers' ability to, to access credit in order to get fertilizer. Well. In the U.S., we really are not seeing much impact of credit situation. Uh, you know, we're, we're not like the general economy, and, and, and so, you know, farmers have got very, very good, you know, debt to equity positions and all. Land prices are still extremely high. You know, crop prices, even though they've come down from those, you know, huge levels and all, they're still high relative to history, and so farmers are still in pretty good shape financially. Uh, we do, uh, with our farmer newsletter and all, we do a poll periodi periodically, and one that we did about a month ago asked them that exact question, you know, what, what are you seeing in terms of, of, of lending, or is there any credit problems that you're aware of? And what we got back in our, in our poll was basically that only, there's only about 25 to 3% of our poll respondents that said that they were having any tighter regulations on credit, and that typically was from farmers that don't own their land. So, you know, if they're a cash renter, if they're paying cash and they don't have the equity to back up that lending and all, they didn't say that they couldn't get the credit, but it was just a little tighter situation for them. Maybe, you know, the, the bankers were saying, you know, maybe you need to, to forward price some of this product and all, you know, to lock in some profits if you can or something, you know. So I don't think that the, uh, the, the global credit issue right now in agriculture is really that big a deal. What the concern here in Canada, at least from a few people, was that it wasn't so much the farmers not getting the credit, it was the intermediate supplier who, was, who needed to get the credit in order to make that fertilizer available. And that's, that's been one of the concerns that's been here. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, if you look at the, the, the different strata, the, the farmer situation is in, they're in pretty good shape. The dealers are the ones that I think are having some, some problems in there. And, you know, a, a lot of that may go back to whether you're strictly a fertilizer dealer or whether you also run an elevator. Because, you know, the situation we saw in the U.S. last fall was that a lot of fertilizer elevators got into real serious trouble because of forward contracts from the farmers that they had to start making margin calls on. And, you know, some of those people, you know, were 10 to 15 times their normal margin level simply because there was such a volatility in prices that a lot of those people did have to kind of, you know, kind of pull back a little bit because, you know, their, their banks were saying, hey, you know, we're, we're way out there with you on these margin calls and all. We've got to you know, kind of step back and let things calm down some.